On this episode of Chilling True Tales, we ask, when people depart from this life, are their last thoughts with their loved ones? And in the moments before they pass, do they try to say goodbye? Maybe these true stories will help you decide. Final Visit 1970 United Kingdom Location Suppressed Jason and his brother Paul had grown up together and were part of a very close family. He was very close to his brother and they did a lot of things together as they were of similar ages. Unfortunately though, when Paul turned 21, his health took a sudden and terrible turn for the worst. He started to deteriorate very quickly and the family were not sure what was going on. After a few visits to the doctors and a hospital admission, the source of the problems was discovered. Paul had a blood clot in the middle of his brain, and things from there went bad to worse, as core functions of his body started to shut down. Paul ended up on life support in hospital, and this was the only thing keeping him alive. His parents and Jason would visit him and sit by his bedside for hours, hoping and praying that somehow Paul would recover. However, after trying everything they could, the doctors could not resolve the problem, and soon enough, the doctors regrettably had to tell their parents that there was no longer any brain activity. Then the family were faced with the difficult decision of turning off the life support. Jason's parents couldn't give the doctors an answer straight away, and so they went home to think about it. That night, Jason's father, quite upset and needing the distraction, went to work. He was a taxi driver and had a late shift. Jason and his mother stayed home and they were talking and listening to music that Paul loved and played often. When suddenly the front door opened and in walked Paul. Shocked and amazed, they stared at Paul who looked well. He was walking around and had a smile on his face. Paul told them that he was better and so he decided to return home. Jason's mother turned white and said, You can't be here. She couldn't process what was going on. Paul walked over to her to give her a big hug and told her that everything would be okay and that he loved her. Their mother broke down in tears and soon Jason started to cry too. Paul then seeing that Jason was also crying walked over to him. Jason said that the doctors must have lied. Paul whispered to him the same thing that he'd said to their mother, that he loved him and not to be upset. Paul then stood up and told them that he had to go to bed as he was very tired. They watched him walk into his bedroom, and as he vanished into the room through the doorway, suddenly the phone rang and startled them. Jason picked up the phone. It was the hospital and they asked to speak to their mother. He handed her the phone and a few seconds later, his mother fainted as they gave her the news that Paul had passed away in hospital. I love hearing your true creepy stories. I think we all love the creepy and the strange, and that's why we're here. Ghosts, demons, UFOs, aliens, cryptids, urban legends and more. If it's creepy and weird, it has a home here. Mistaken Identity Blackpool, United Kingdom, circa 1990 Francine had been friends with Jeanette for a few years and in their teenage years grew up together going to school and eventually they were looking at finishing their high school together. They were now about 17 years old and friends would often joke that they looked like sisters as they were of similar height, build and even had the same hair colour. The girls really wanted to get away and have a holiday, and they found a property that they could rent for a few nights in Blackpool. This was away from where they would normally live, and the girls planned to get a holiday away for just a few days. They were ecstatic when they were given permission to stay away from home for the very first time and without supervision of adults, and so they decided that they would make the most of it. They travelled out to the property at Blackpool and set up to stay there. 
They were excited about being away from their families for the first time. And on arrival, Francine realised that they would have to stay in separate rooms, but that they were immediately next to each other. There was a main bedroom of sorts to the property, and then there was another room that they called the guest house. The guest house is where her friend Jeanette would normally stay whenever her family would go there. This time, however, Jeanette wanted to stay in the main room, and Francine was happy to stay in the guest room. On the second night, they'd settled down to sleep, and soon enough Francine heard what she thought was movement in the room. She was suddenly awoken by the feeling of somebody sitting on the end of her bed. She wasn't sure if she was dreaming, until she could feel someone touch her lower leg. She sat up suddenly to see an old man sitting on the end of her bed. Francine was so scared but couldn't scream. Even though the situation was terrifying, she somehow felt comforted by his presence at the same time. After an awkward and terrifying few moments of silence, the old man spoke. He told Francine that he loved her and that he was really proud of her. He also said that she needed to support her mum and brother, and then calmly told her to go back to sleep. Confused and scared, in the morning, Francine asked Jeanette if she had seen someone coming into the room. But she laughed and told Francine that she obviously had way too much to drink the night before. Then they went down for breakfast, and reception had a message for her friend Jeanette that she had to call home urgently. Jeanette called home to be told that her grandfather had passed away the night before. It wasn't until after they returned from their holiday, however, that Francine saw a picture of Jeanette's grandfather that had passed away, and... It was the same old man that had come to sit on her bed. Had the grandfather visited the wrong person on his passing? Hi guys, this show is only made possible by the contributions of true stories from people just like you. If you'd like to share your experience for the show, you can contact us by email, details of which are in the description, or directly at the website at www.chillingtruetales.com I can't wait to hear all of your chilling true tales. I need to go now. Narellan, New South Wales, Australia, 2005 Jared was married and lived in Narellan with his wife. However, due to a tense history within his family, there was little to no contact between certain family members. This meant that they didn't always talk to their grandmother, Cecilia, who lived on her own. But Jared would try to visit his grandmother at least once every few months. After some time, Cecilia's health declined, and Jared's mother Freya, who managed her care, moved Cecilia to a nursing home interstate, to Queensland, which was closer to Freya. This meant that Jared could no longer visit his grandmother, as it was a considerable distance away. This caused further strain in the family. Cecilia's health had declined after several months, but Jared knew nothing about it. Freya had not communicated it to Jared or his siblings. Then one night, at about 2am, something happened to Jared that he thought was a dream at the time. He lay in bed as he noticed his grandmother Cecilia walk into his room, and stand at the foot of his bed. Confused, he looked straight up at her. How could she suddenly be here? And at this time? She looked at Jared and smiled. She said to him that she'd come to say goodbye, and that she had to go now, and that she loved him. Jared asked confused, Wait, how are you here? And where are you going? The image of Cecilia repeated to him that she'd come to say goodbye and that she had to go now. Jared then wasn't sure whether it was that she had just disappeared or that he woke up. But he awoke his wife to tell her about the strange dream and then settled back to sleep. A few hours later, Jared awoke and was driving on his way to work when he got a call from his sister Irene. Irene told him that she had something to tell him, and that 
maybe he should pull over. Jared sighed and said, I think I know what you're going to say. Irene proceeded to tell him that their grandmother had passed away the night before at around 2am, the same time that Jared had received his final visit. If you'd like to submit your own chilling true tale so that your story might be featured in one of these episodes, contact me through our website at www.chillingtruetales.com or on email on seekersosparanormal at gmail.com. Email details are in the description. Thanks again for joining me. Until next time.